Welcome back to another installment of our Do It Proper with Copper video series. In this video, I will provide useful design and installation guidelines for installing copper iron alloy pipe and fittings for high pressure refrigeration systems. Understanding these guidelines are crucial due to recent international efforts to reduce the effects of global warming and ozone depletion. Many traditional refrigerants have been restricted and in some cases banned completely due to their very high global warming potentials, or GWP. For example, R22, a previously very common refrigerant, has a GWP of about 2,400 and will be phased out and illegal to manufacture or import in the United States on January 1, 2020. R134A, a refrigerant developed as a substitute for R22, has a GWP of 1,300. And R410A, another replacement refrigerant, has a GWP of 1,725. GWP is the measurement of how much heat a greenhouse gas is capable of trapping in the atmosphere. The system compares the global warming potential of various gases, like refrigerants, to the baseline or reference of carbon dioxide, which has a GWP of 1 and an ozone depletion potential, or ODP, of 0. The higher the GWP number, the greater risk that refrigerant poses to global warming. Carbon dioxide, one of the first refrigerant gases utilized in compression type mechanical refrigeration, dates back to the early 19th century and is a natural refrigerant with a long history of being very efficient. While the traditional copper tube designed for HVAC applications does not provide the wall thickness necessary to handle the temperatures and pressures of carbon dioxide systems, a new copper alloy which contains a small percentage of iron, has proven to withstand the high pressures experienced in CO2 refrigeration systems. Copper iron alloy, C19400, marketed by a number of tube and fitting manufacturers and identified by their individual trademark names, has met the demands of CO2's high pressure and temperature operating ranges. In fact, Copper iron tube is rated for pressures in the range of 90 bar, or about 1,305 PSI, to 130 bar, about 1,885 PSI, well within the operating ranges of carbon dioxide refrigeration systems. The installation techniques for this new piping material is the same as the brazing techniques utilized for standard plumbing or ACR brazed applications. Purging with an inert gas like nitrogen at very low pressures is required. First, the tube must be measured so that when inserted into the fitting, it will fill the socket. Cut the tube square at the desired length. Ream and deburr the inside edge of the tube and chamfer the outside edge of the tube. Clean and remove any oxides, dirt, or other particles from the outside and inside of the tube. And fitting. When joining copper iron tube to copper iron fittings, no brazing flux is required. For a horizontal joint, begin preheating the bottom two-thirds of the tube and the bottom two-thirds of the fitting cup. The installation techniques for this new piping material is the same as the brazing techniques utilized for standard plumbing or ACR brazed applications. When joining copper iron tube and fittings to materials containing phosphorus, brazing filler metals containing at least 2% silver of AWS B cup series are recommended. However, Tube and fitting manufacturer's installation recommendations should be followed. When joining copper iron tube to materials that do not contain phosphorus, like black steel, brazing flux is required. Additionally, brazing alloys meeting AWS bag series of 45 to 56% silver are required. For best results when joining copper iron to black steel transition fittings, 
allow for a 1 16th inch gap between the end of the copper iron tube and the bottom of the black steel socket. Despite new regulations, copper continues to be the best choice for piping applications. Copper iron piping provides a lightweight but strong as iron solution for high pressure HVACR systems. Additional information related to design and installation of copper iron alloy pipe and fitting systems can be found in the Copper Tube Handbook, which is available from the Apple or Google Play stores.